Good day, everyone. Welcome to our Learn at Home Facebook Live. For the discussion tonight, the topic will be on empowering parent engagement in the digital age, a tool to unlock and maximize students' potential. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.revalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Share the video using hashtag LearnAs1PH as our official hashtag to our Vival webinars. Experience learning, Kavival! And now, to proceed with our webinar, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker for this session. Mr. Joram Kim Kerquera is a graduate of Bachelor in Secondary Education, major in English at PNU Manila in 2011. He obtained his Master of Arts, major in Communication at the Ateneo de Manila University. Currently, he is taking his PhD degree at UST. He has been teaching for almost a decade and he already taught English, Literature, Public Speaking, and Research classes. He also represented the country in various international research conferences about education and communication. He has been delivering CPD seminars across the country for more than five years. At present, he is working as a faculty member at UST Junior High School, where he teaches communication arts and journalism courses. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Mr. Joram Kim Kerquera. All right, so good evening to everyone. Of course, to all the viewers of our Facebook Live session tonight, uh, isa pong magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. So allow me, of course, to present to you uh, the deck, of course, that I prepared for our learning at home uh, session tonight. But before that, again, welcome to all the teachers, the parents, and of course, to everyone, if you also have students and administrators, of course, watching this specific session. Indeed, in today's society, there is no doubt that our job as educators has truly become more challenging. There are a lot of, of course, changes that we have to face, that we have, of course, to deal with, of course, with the migration of our face-to-face -face classes to, of course, the distance learning, be it modular or online. With the many hardships, the challenges, right, these changes that we face, it is very important, of course, for us okay, to handle these things effectively. But the question is, how are we going to do this? How are we going to ensure that we would be able, of course, to fulfill our mission as educator, right? This is actually one of the questions okay, that we are going to answer tonight, right? That is why, of course, our topic is focused on how we are going to teach our students, of course, not only to be effective English speakers, to be good in math, to be excellent in science and TLE and then the like, not only, of course, to have a strong character inculcated with positive morals and virtues, but of course, also, okay, of course, we'll be able, uh, they will be able to, of course, to develop the ICT skills, of course, to become major literate, and of course, uh, information major, lit major uh, information literate and the like. So, napakadami natin kailangan ni develop, okay? And of course, to be able to do this in the distance learning setup is definitely going to be a challenge, okay? And this is why, of course, we need more power, we need help, right? So, and of course, we can get this help through our parents, of course, through the parents of our students. I hope that tonight, all of you, of course, will be able to get new insights, will be able, of course, to learn something new that you can apply, of course, in your classes. Again, welcome to our session entitled Empowering Parent Engagement in the Digital Age, a tool to unlock and maximize a student's potential. Right, so again, in any webinar, in every teacher, uh, teacher seminar, CPD training, of course, that I conduct, I always begin with what I call the quote of the session. Today's quote comes from Henry Ford. According to him, coming together is a beginning. Staying together is a progress. And working together is a success. Indeed, no man is an island, right? So, of course, we have to face the problems as one educational community. Right? So if we're going, of course, to face all the challenges, okay, of course, together with the help, not only of the administrators, of the teachers, of the students, but along with the parents, then definitely, of course, we can achieve academic success. Right? Even, of course, uh, despite, of course, the many uh, things, of course, that change, okay, of course, because of the danger 
imposed upon by of course this coronavirus pandemic of course by of course with the shift of the educational sectors from face to face of course to online lahat po yan of course if we're going to first to work together then definitely okay, nothing is impossible especially of course with the solution Okay, na tinatawag natin, di ba, ang solusyon natin, of course, para tuloy-tuloy natin mabigyan, of course, ng quality education ng mga estudyante ngayon, of course, that is what we call distance learning. Here, of course, we're not giving any option. Di ba, COVID-19, of course, does not permit us to go out. Right? Of course, recently, nagkaroon, of course, ng another surge of cases. Right? So right now, unti-unti, kahit pa paano nakokontrol. Right? Of course, but that does that mean that, of course, we would already be safe if we're going outside. Okay? So since, of course, we cannot go out, and since, of course, we have to continue with our lives, of course, we still have to offer quality education to our students, then therefore, of course, we're embracing this type of learning, which is, of course, distance learning. Okay? So, but let us try to define first what is distance learning. So una, of course, simulan natin sa simpleng definition ng distance learning bago tayo, of course, tumungo sa, of course, kahalagahan ng roles ng parents, of course, in this digital age. So we'll talk about distance learning. It is a learning delivery mode where interaction takes place between the teacher and the students who are geographically remote from each other during, of course, a time of instruction. In other words, it is a method of study where, of course, the teachers and the students do not meet inside the classroom, not in a brick and mortar setup. But of course, they rely to the use of the, uh, they use the internet, email, uh, the learning management system of the schools, video conferencing applications, of course, to still conduct both synchronous and asynchronous classes. Of course, in distance learning, lessons are delivered outside the traditional face-to-face -face setup. Okay? And of course, we heavily rely on the educational tools of online learning. Right? Of course, again, uh, simple words, of course, distance learning, deliver. Okay? Learning uh, to the students in the comfort and safety of their homes. And of course, it allows students from different parts not only of the Philippines, but also, of course, of the entire world, okay? Of course, to be connected to one another, making learning more accessible, not only for students who are currently in the Philippines, but, of course, uh, anywhere, right, in this specific world, as long as they have, of course, the internet, okay? According to Simonson, okay, there are, this is learning can be, of course, summarized sa pagdi-discuss ng apat na characteristics. So what are those things? Number one, Distance learning is by definition carried out through institutions. It is not, okay, take note of this one, it is, it is not self-study or a non-academic learning environment. In other words, as teachers, we have to remember that distance learning is not independent homeschooling. So it's not about okay, letting the students do everything, right? Of course, in distance learning, we still have the students still have teachers. And ba rin tayo. So what is our role? Our role, of course, is to ensure that we give instructions to the students, we assess them, and of course, we provide the feedback and the intervention that they actually need. Right? So it's not like uh, independent homeschooling where students would be, of course, uh, given uh, kumbaga, the privilege to choose what to study, when to study, where to study, what to do, and then the like. So of course, even in a distance learning setup, be it modular or online, students are still given instructions, of course, uh, na talaga naman nilang kailangan nilang sunod because of course, they're still created. Okay? Number two, uh, geographic separation is inherent in distance learning. And time may also separate students and teachers. We also have to understand that even if we're connected, of course, by the internet, there would be a lot of differences. Number one, time differences. Possible na sa mga estudyante natin gabi. And of course, sa atin umaga, of course, susundin natin yung time kung nasa ang bansa, yung, o nasa ang, uh, bansa, of course, yung school. Right? So if gabi sa kanila, then of course, uh, it means talagang may time difference. And of course, there would be uh, specific challenges na talagang kailangan natin harapin kapag ganun ang nangyayari. But of course, these are one of the things that of course, we have to learn how to deal with diba, in, distance, in a distance learning setup. Second, of course, expect that there must be societal and cultural beliefs, right? So, of course, kailangan talaga uh, culturally competent individuals sa mga educators, of course, for us to be able, of course, to deal with uh, with this, of course, differences. Third, according to Simonson, interactive telecommunications connect individuals within a learning group and with the teacher. Actually, just uh, not only the students and the teachers are being connected by, of course, the internet and, of course, these different products of technology. But it connects, oh, these things connect all the stakeholders of the school. 
'di ba? Of course, we can talk to the parents. Nar- naranasan niyo na ba of course na magkaroon ng parent teacher conference using a video conferencing platform ako. Naranasan ko na a number of times, right? Of course, hindi ibig sabihin na distance learning titigil na 'yung pagkikipag-usap natin sa parents. Actually, mas dapat natin kausapin ng mga magulang because of course, in this digital age, the roles are different, right? Of course, in this uh, distance learning setup, they have to understand of course how to of course fulfill the roles what are of course the things that they should do uh, to ensure of course that their kids would be able to understand their lessons acquire the skills of course the knowledge that they need of course which are of course stipulated in the of course curriculum the, uh, that the department of education of course has provided and number four, this is education like any education establishes a learning group sometimes called a learning community which is composed of the students the teacher and of course the instructional resources. Napakahalaga nito may dear teachers, right? So pag sinabi nating instructional resources, instructional materials, of course, it would refer to everything and anything of course that we're going to use. Of course for the kumbaga in the, uh doon sa buong uh teaching and learning process. Of course, this is education, okay? Again, okay, of course, nagkakaroon tayo ng learning community, nagkakaroon tayo ng learning group, of course, which we have to of course to uh maximize, all right? So looking at of course this, kumbaga the definition, the characteristics of distance learning, maraming magsasabi ay ang galing pala, 'di ba? Ay parang ayos pa rin din sa ng distance learning. But of course distance learning definitely is not perfect. Kumbaga talaga namang may kumbaga may pitfalls ang tinatawag. So what are the pitfalls? What are the downsides of distance learning? 'Di ba? Lalong-lalo na of course right now, uh, this is of the first year, the first academic year, kumbaga for the entire academic year we've been implementing distance learning. So ano ba yung mga pitfalls noon? Number one, of course, okay, teachers need to distill their key goals and leverage technology features to meet them. Admit it or not, okay? Teachers or some teachers lack of experience in designing and deploying teaching experiences online. Online teaching, of course, online learning, definitely, it requires teachers to acquire new skills, particularly in using technology. Diba? Because, of course, we have to understand that there is a digital gap. Diba? May digital gap, of course, between the digital immigrants composed of the most tenured teachers in the educational institutions and, of course, the digital natives composed of the students, some of the parents, and, of course, maybe some of the teachers too. Okay? So of course pag sinabi natin this is learning wala kang choice you have to of course to use this forms of the, you have of course to use uh, technology to be able of course to meet with your students uh, of course to teach them to continue of course fulfilling your mission as a teacher okay so of course there are also times we're in kapag sabi natin ay okay marunong naman akong gumamit eh. there are also times we're in of course instructors are tempted right of course to add a lot of multimedia bells which are sometimes of course unnecessary especially in meeting the learners objectives so baga there are times where in we prioritize the the form of technology that we're going to use over of course the instructional design over of course the content which is of course definitely wrong sabi ko nga hindi content ang mag-a-adjust. Technology ang mag-a-adjust para ma-deliver ang content ng maayos. Right? Of course, focus always on your instructional design, of course, on your content, and not on the technology, okay, on the application that you are going to use. Number two, of course, online learning provides insufficient support for vulnerable learners. Pag sinabi natin vulnerable learners, of course, these are the learners uh, who, sabihin natin, i-classify natin na sila yung mga struggling sila yung mga learners na kailangan talaga ng most help from the teachers, right? If the teachers, of course, won't be able to maximize the potential of distance learning, of online learning, or specifically in addressing diverse needs of the students, then definitely, these vulnerable students, mas mahihirapan sila, right? Lalo na kung talagang wala tayong monitoring, wala tayong follow-up, talaga mas mahihirapan sila. So, of course, that is another downside of the distance learning setup. And third, of course, Truth be told, some students do not have access to high-functioning educational equipment and of course suffer from poor connectivity. Ito talaga, wala talaga tayong magagawa, right? Uh, I have encountered a lot of times wherein talagang nawawala ng internet, talagang very poor ang connection ng mga estudyante natin. Sometimes, big day, performance task, talagang they would prepare everything. Biglang on, on the day of their performance, on the time of their performance, biglang maglolokong ang internet. Right, of course, we cannot do anything about it. Right, so that's another downside of distance learning. And number four, of course, uh, learners might not feel the much-needed teacher presence, especially for the young ones. Ako, babalik tayo ko dyan na. The teachers might not feel, of course, the love, the care of, of the students, de ba? Ako, as for uh, to be honest, for me, 
ang pinakanakakalungkot na parte ng distance learning, I don't know if you will agree with me, but I hope you do. Ako, for me, ang pinakanakakalungkot is not being able, of course, to see uh, your students smiling whenever they're learning, whenever they're enjoying the activities. It's not being able, of course, to feel kumbaga, the human connection na talaga namang sanay na sanay tayo. Because, of course, it's really hard to talk to uh, to them online, especially, of course, we cannot really require them na talaga mag-on ng camera because, of course, we have the uh, Data Privacy Act, di ba? So, of course, talagang marami rin naman talaga tayong isa sa alang-alang dahil, of course, uh, unang-una, uh, uh, baka ano ba, ano ba ang meron sa bahay nila? Let's say, for example, baka mamaya wala palang area talaga for, of course, uh, the learning environment. So, mas mahihirapan sila kung mag-on sila ng camera. The privacy, of course, uh, not only of the student but of the entire family. So, marami tayong kailangan i-consider. Right? Of course, para bago natin sila uh, i-require o bago natin sila, of course, uh, sabihan na mag-on ng camera, of course, we can only encourage them not require them. Not unless, of course, we have consent forms talaga signed by the parents. So, in other words, napakadami. Napakadami rin downsides ng distance learning. Considering, of course, na we have no choice but, of course, to implement distance learning. Yet, of course, we're seeing these downsides. We're actually discovering these pitfalls. What is the solution? What is the solution to these problems? Okay, truth be told, hindi tayo ang, kumbaga, hindi natin hawak ng solusyon. Kumbaga, hindi naman sa hindi natin hawak, let's say, we're not the only solution. Kumbaga, we, we, hindi, hindi natin kakayanin na tayo lang. Okay, of course, for us to be able to put, to put of course, an end to this dilemma, Definitely, of course, there's one way. And that is, of course, through the process of collaboration. So pag sinabi natin collaboration, of course, it is a joint effort between two or more people, of course, free from hidden agendas to produce an output in response, of course, to a common goal or shared priority. At the end of the day, my dear teachers, what is our priority? What is our goal? Right? Of course, that is for the students. Not to fail. Diba? Hindi naman natin go, ibabaksak ko yan, makulit ka. <laughs> Hindi ganoon, di ba? Of course. It is for our students to become the best versions of themselves, right? So it must put, it, we must put in mind, my dear teachers, my dear educators, my dear parents, okay, that it is a must for us to observe a strong collaboration and of course develop collaborative cultures over time. While the benefits are clear, genuine collaboration, of course, is a very complex thing. In the field of education, when we talk about collaboration, it takes place when members of an inclusive learning community work together as equals to assist students to succeed in the classroom. Okay? So in other words, teacher collaboration, of course, when members of a community work together, of course, to increase the student learning and of course, student achievement. Yun naman talaga ang goal natin eh, for our students to gain academic success. So pag nagtulungan tayo, ang katulong natin, co-teachers natin, ang katulong natin, administrators natin, nakipag-tie up tayo sa library, nakipag-tie up tayo sa ka-guidance counselor, nakipag-tie up tayo sa mga magulang. That is what we call collaboration in education. In this education, collaboration, of course, can be ad administered by four, of course, kung baga, hati natin sa apat na klase ng posisyon, right? Of course, we have the teachers, we have the administrators, of course, the staff, the students, and of course, the parents. It is not enough that the collaboration would only be between the teachers and the students. Hindi pwede yun. Okay? Kailangan itong apat na to, of course, magkaroon ng collaboration. Magkaroon ng tinatawag nating professional collaboration. Again, professional collaboration, of course, teachers working together with colleagues and other stakeholders, including the parents, to enrich, to improve the entire teaching learning process. Of course, let us be reminded, my dear teachers, my dear parents who are watching us right now, collaboration, of course, is not simple. Hindi yan simple, hindi pwede, oy, tulungan tayo, collaboration na, hindi ganun yun, right? It requires careful thinking and preparation, planning, right? It requires time, of course, to be achieved. To really understand collaboration, right? Of course, it requires allowing okay, everyone, all the stakeholders, talaga naman, of course, na talaga naman mag-reflect at maintindihan, of course, yung kanilang ginagawa, right? So it is something, of course, that is being developed over time by repeated action and, of course, uh, reflection, right? So again, effective collaboration, effective professional collaboration is a partnership because it requires the collective group, of course, to continuously okay, make and remake meaning. And of course, to be committed to investing time and energy into the attainment of a specific and clear vision. And that is, of course, for the students to gain academic success. Always remember, my dear teachers, my dear parents, okay, the most basic of all human needs is the need to understand and be understood. And the best way to understand people, of course, is by listening to them. Collaborating, of course, is turning out to be a very powerful but complex strategy. 
It requires participants to meet regularly and to take time to develop professional collective responsibility. Indeed, andaan natin, nothing worth having comes easy. So of course, if we're going to invest if our time, if we're going to exert effort, then definitely, of course, kumbaga yung tinatawag natin na professional collaboration, ma-achieve natin yan. Tandaan natin ha, my dear teachers, my dear parents, my dear students who are watching us right now, napakahalaga, of course, uh, ng ating skill of listening. Okay? Of course, collaboration would begin there. Hindi pwedeng tayo lang ang pakikinggan. Dapat marunong din tayo, of course, pakinig. So as teachers, hindi ibig sabihin na opinion leaders tayo. Hindi ibig sabihin na tayo may hawak ng grade ng mga bata o tayo nagbibigay ng grade ng mga bata. And we are going to use it. Remember as teachers, we have to listen not only to the students but also of course to the parents. Okay? Remember my dear teachers, sabi ko kanina may pitfalls ang distance learning. Okay, of course, ang mga estudyante bumabaksa sa distance learning kailan? Number one, kapag hindi malinaw ang instruction ni teacher. Nagkakagulo ang mga bata, hindi nila alam kung anong dapat nilang gawin. Right? Number two, kapag hindi nakuha ni teacher ang attention ng mga bata effectively. Right? So ang mga bata, nagmobile legends, nagbabalorat, abang nagkaklasa, nanonood ng vlogs, and then the like. Number three, since ang mga bata ay digital natives, uh, they have, of course, more knowledge, right? more experience in terms of using this technology. And they tend to, the tendency, of course, is they are going to abuse it and use it in a negative way. Di ba? Number four, of course, kapag yung mga bata na intindihan pero very shallow knowledge level lang pero hindi ma-apply. And number five, of course, kapag hindi natin na-address ang diverse needs ng mga bata. Okay? So again, paano natin ito pa paano natin ito solusyonan? Paano natin masisigurado na mga estudyante ay makikinig sa atin, magbibigay ng atensyon, gagawin ang dapat nilang gawin, hindi abusuhin ang paggamit ng technology, maaiintindihan of course ang lesson nila not only in the knowledge level but they will also be apply it, apply the skill, and of course that of course the, the, the education would be able to address all the needs of the student. How? Of course again, hindi lang tayo. Okay? How? Of course by seeking the help of course of the parents. Remember, For the students to be successful in distance learning setup, definitely it takes three. Hindi sa patang isa, hindi sa patang dalawa. Tatlo po. Of course, the parent, the teachers, of course, which which would already include the staff, uh, the the administrators as well, and of course the students. Okay. Always remember, my dear uh, viewers, children of course need the help of their parents when they cannot study completely independently. They need their parents to monitor, to assist, and encourage them from time to time. Maraming bata na pag nag-iisa, parang feeling nila, they cannot do it. Di ba very common ngayon kapag tumingin tayo ng social media, there will be a lot of posts saying na, ay, parang uh, wala ako naiintindihan, gulong-gulo uh, ako, third year na ako, pero uh, feeling ko, uh, daig pa ako ng, for example, ng grade 7, and then the like. Oh, there would be a lot of posts, rhymes about this thing. Why? Because the students do not have the self-confidence, do not have the self-esteem. And when the parents... Okay. Uh, of course, would tell them. Kaya mo yan. Of course, would be there to guide that. Would be there to guide their children. Then definitely, of course, it would boost the morale of the students. Because unfortunately, we teachers cannot do that. Di natin peding tabihan ng mga bata ngayon. Kasi paano natin sila tatabihan? Of course, nagko nakikita lang tayo sa monitors, right? So no physical classes, right? So we have a hard time definitely in monitoring them. And of course, how are we going to assist them? Kung talagang ganun, of course, we can only remind them, we can give them words of encouragement, of course, but of course, it's different pa rin kapag magulang nila, of course, yung sumama sa kanila. And of course, if the parents, if they would feel that their parents, of course, uh, kumbaga talaga namang uh, uh, pay, uh, very important, uh, of course, pay attention, not only, of course, uh, to providing their needs, but also, of course, to ensuring na talaga namang, of course, nasusundan niya, nasusundan nila, of course, yung mga tinuturo ni teachers. Remember, my dear parents, you can be more involved and helpful in virtual learning, right? Than in traditional teaching model, which which makes it more possible to help children all around development. Why? Because right now you're all with your kids, right? You're always with your kids, right? Lalo na yung mga naka work from home, o di ba sabi natin pumapasok tayo? Meron naman mga pumapasok pero hindi araw-araw. May days na talaga naman work at home kayo. So right now, of course, you spend a lot of time with your children. Umaga, gabi, hating gabi, tanghali. Right, so you spend time with them. So of course, you see them. Of course, you can monitor them. You can encourage them. You can actually inspire them more. Of course, to be better. Sabi nga ng research, the parents' behavior, expectations, involvement, of course, through time spent on homeworks, 
have positive effects on students' academic achievements. All right? So in other words, the parents, okay, of course, we can make the students feel better okay, by, of course, uh, helping them in doing their tasks, in doing their performance tasks, their formative tests. Kung, for example, assignment yan, pwede natin silang igay. But of course, not to the point na tayo magsasagot. Diba? It's not helping them, right? Iba ang, pagtutu iba ang pagtulong of course uh, of course pag abuso ng of course opportunity hindi na tulong yun kasi syempre ang tulong dapat in the long run magiging beneficial pero hindi naman beneficial kung tayo ang magsasagot right another research actually say this one by Bond in 2019 sabi niya parent involvement and engagement with children's learning has shown strong influence to student achievement engagement motivation and school completion no doubt by your teachers he's correct sabi nga niya Home school partnership plays a vital role in academic success. If the student would feel okay, that they're not alone, that they don't only have their teachers, but they also have their parents supporting them all the way, then definitely they would work harder. Kumbaga, they would be more inspired to do better. Remember, my dear teachers, my dear parents, together everyone achieves more. If we're going, of course, to work hand in hand, then talaga namang mas kakayanin natin. Right? So right now, allow me, of course, to share with you some of the changes sa rules ng mga magulang. Okay, of course, in the new normal. Okay, this new normal setup, of course, is not only a different concept for the learners, right? But also, of course, for you, the parents, for us, of course, the educators. Yes, teachers kami, geared up kami sa pagiging curators, sa pagiging facilitators. But of course, the parents, let's have to, we have to admit that this is something new to you. Diba ngayon, you are going to function as coaches and sometimes, of course, as of course as facilitators as well, right? So for parents, it's going to be an added responsibility. Okay? But for teachers, of course, it's going to be ganun din, added responsibility. Kaya lang, of course, mas mabigat, mabigat din talaga, of course, yung adjustments ng mga magulang, right? Again, put in mind with your parents that you have a direct impact on the education, on the quality of the education that your kids will be receiving. Especially now that we are, of course, implementing distance learning setup. Okay? If you're going to be a coach, for example, for your students, uh, for your kids rather, for your children, at talaga you're going to inspire them, then of course, what do you expect? Positive. But of course, if you're going to show no interest at all in helping your kids, then what do you expect, of course? That the students would feel alone. The students would think na, grabe naman, ang daming pagbabago, pero naging isa ako. So of course, it would not create a positive impact. So of course, sa kanyang performance. Of course, uh, parents set the standard. In an online learning setup, of course, parents control the environment. Nasa decision nyo, ano ang ilalagay nyo sa learning environment ng mga bata. Unlike in a school setup, decision ni teacher, oh, okay, dito ang ganito ang sit plan, ganito ang upuan, ganito ang the light. Ngayon, of course, parents, of course, have control uh, over these things, right? So, uh, nasa kanila, if they would be able, of course, to allot a good physical uh, kumbaga, space where conducive talaga for learning. Of course, kapag ganun ang learning, kapag ganun ang, ang pwesto ng bata, of course, there's a higher possibility that, of course, a student would be more encouraged uh, to learn more. Second, of course, parents leave by example. Okay? So, of course, if parents okay, push online learners to remain committed and to work hard, hindi pwedeng natatapo sa salita. Kailangan pati sa gawa. Of course, uh, if the teachers are opinion leaders, if the teachers are models in the eyes of the students, then the parents likewise are, are, are opinion leaders and of course are role models then sa mata ng kanilang mga anak. Right? So parents are expected to reflect of course this on their own behavior. Kung parents ang magkasabi na, oh, wag mo na mo nang gawin yan, bukas na lang yan, ayaw mo nang malate, ay talaga masasana yung bata. Sabi nga ni mami, pwede malate, eh. di-late na lang natin ipasa. Of course, yung mga simpleng bagay na lumalabas, of course, sa atin, mga ginagawa natin, again, these things, of course, really matter sa mga, of course, sa mga magulang ngayon. Ay, sa mga kabataan ngayon, right? So again, to the parents, Ito lang ang hiling ko, personally as an educator. Okay? Ito po hinihiling ko. Baka sabihin natin, ay, pwede na pala akong tumulong sa edukasyon ng aking anak. Pwede pala akong magturo sa kanya after class. Pero wag natin samahan, of course, during class. Ha? We have to, of course, uh, give them time to be to learn things independently also. Baga, we, we only offer intervention afterwards. Pero alamin natin yung limits. Alamin din natin, of course, kung yun, ano yung nagbago. Remember, my dear parents, your experience as a student is undoubtedly different from your child's educational experience. So it is very important that you will be able, of course, to understand and acknowledge the many changes in the field of education, which, of course, includes the learner's na nature, learner's attitude, and the learner's preferences. Baka sasabihin natin sa mga bata, ay, naku, nung panahon ko nga, ganito ginagawa natin, ipilit natin sa kanila na matuto sa ganung pangamaraan. No. Remember, my dear, my dear parents, okay, if we're going to force that, 
ipapasahin natin yan, of course, we're not teaching them, we're tormenting them. Okay? And of course, in order for us to be able to educate them effectively, it is a must, of course, that we embrace these changes. Okay? Even, of course, in, sa pagdisiplina sa kanila. Di ba dati, may, ako may mga parent, ako nakausap siguro several years ago, parang sasabihin sa akin, Sir, pag nangulit, pingutin mo. Pag nangulit, kurutin mo. But I don't do that, right? Why? Because if I will be doing that, Okay, siguro, uh, it would create trauma. Diba? Rebellion ang dating sa bata. Yan, rebellion magiging labas sa bata. Hindi yan matututo. Punishment, hindi. Ma, kung baga magiging ma, galit ang mararamdaman ng bata. But of course, kasi sasabihin ng parents, eh kasi nung panahon ko dati, pag piningot ako ni teacher, nakikinig na talaga ako. But of course, uh, we cannot compare. Kung baga, there are a lot of changes. And even in the teaching strategies, the best teaching strategies that made the best educators before are no longer the best teaching strategies that would make a force, uh, kung baga, uh, the best, uh, that would make of course us still the best teachers nowadays. Talaga namang napakadaming nagbago. And of course, uh, the parents must also be able to understand these changes so that you will be able of course to of course help your students effectively. Alright? Uh, always remember, okay, uh, my dear teachers, my dear parents, okay, tandaan po natin, okay, uh, the most overwhelming key to a child's success is the positive involvement of their parents. So as parents, of course, it is very important okay, that you, of course, continue okay, to make the students, your, the kids, their children, feel that you're always there for them. Not only, of course, to provide yung pagkain nila three times a day, but of course, that you will always be there for them whenever they need help, whenever they need assistance, whenever they want more inspiration, of course, for their education. Right? And to the teachers, allow me naman to remind you okay, that, uh, that every child in our class is someone's whole world. So definitely, napakahirap ng distance learning setup. Okay, but if we're going, of course, to remember Okay, kung gaano kahalaga ang mga batang ito, of course, sa kanilang mga magulang, of course, then definitely, we don't have the right, of course, to complain na talagang nakakapagod. At the end of the day, of course, why are we here in this profession? It is not because of, we want money. It is not because uh, we want, of course, a job that would provide us our financial needs or whatsoever. But it is because we want to make a difference, right? So ano po yung dapat natin gawin as, as teachers? Ngayon, kahit napakahirap makipag-collaborate sa mga magulang ngayon kasi ang hirap mag-contact, ang hirap of course humanap ng uh, common time, we have of course to exert our best effort. And definitely of course, my dear teachers, we have to continue trusting one another. Okay? My dear parents, the same thing. Why? Because trust influences the effectiveness of collaborative work. A climate of trust can help establish the safe environment that is necessary for open communication. By their, by their teachers, by their parents, by their administrators, staff, or even students, always remember okay, that trust is the secret to a successful and effective collaboration between and among the members of the educational community. No matter, kumbaga, kahit grabbing effort ng excerpt natin, kahit grabbing planning, if we cannot trust one another, then definitely effective through and professional collaboration would never exist. If we want to make a difference, if we want to make this distance learning setup effective, and uh, if we want, of course, to make this kind of educational setup work for our students, for the kids, for the children, then definitely, of course, we have to learn how to trust one another and, of course, how to work with one another uh, collaboratively and, of course, effectively. All right? So that would be the end of our session, of our learning at home session tonight. I hope marami po tayo naintindihan. Sana po marami po tayo natutunan. If you have questions, you can uh, email me at jcorcuerat.vivalgroup.com Again, maraming salamat po. Of course, let me end the session by telling you okay, that of course, again, in this digital age, there would be a lot of hindrances. There would be a lot of challenges, of course, to gain academic success. But of course, again, let us go back to the very reason why we're doing this. Again, this is not only for us, but it's, of course, for the future of the youth, of the children, of the students. And definitely, of course, if we want them to make, uh, to become better versions of ourselves, then, of course, we must never stop working to make, of course, their dreams a reality. Maraming salamat po, and of course, stay safe, everyone. God bless po. And there we have it. Thank you, Sir Joram, for your insightful learning session. It is such an honor to have you with us tonight. And to all our Kavibal viewers, thank you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. 
Don't forget to register to get your e-certificate of participation. The link is in the caption of this webinar. We encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Facebook page and YouTube channel. Muli, maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat.